Okay, so um, my talk is called Snipers, Snails, Sextants, and Serpents, um, Mobiles in Museums. And I'm going to start by taking you back in time to 2003. Um, this is an HP iPad pocket PC. It's essentially a smartphone without a phone or anything that we like about smartphones. And <laughs> this was the centerpiece and my first introduction to the whole concept of mobiles in museums. It was a centerpiece of a project called the Electronic Guidebook Research Project at the Exploratorium. I was not part of this project. I was an advisor, and I uh, worked on some of the, uh, the forums. However, um, there was a lot of skepticism about this project, and that skepticism, uh, it, it has persisted to the day, and some of, the, some of that skepticism was borne out in the project. You know, mobiles interfere with the experience of exhibits themselves. I mean, especially at a hands-on museum like the Exploratorium, we're taking away one of your hands, right? We want you to be interacting and experiencing this thing over here, and you're looking down at your screen. They're isolating. You're looking down at your screen. You come with a group of people, usually. Um, some people go alone, but a lot of the times it's a social experiment, experiment, experience. <laughs> but um, if you're looking down at the screen, you have headphones on, you're not really engaging with other people. And finally, you know, how do they fit into art museums where, okay, well, that one really hasn't persisted because now cell phones are everywhere. Another thing that has persisted is the analogy, of the, the, the metaphor. If you look at the title of the project, it's a guidebook, right? It's sort of an audio guide or a printed book. And that really has persisted um, as, you know, technology is, is, has um, matured and, and modernized and museums have taken it up. This idea of... Uh, uh, something that you would put in print or something that you'd put in an audio guide um, presented on a multimedia platform like a smartphone. The phone is viewed as, as just that, as a platform that you're presenting content from other, other type that you might present in other ways. Now, a smartphone and a tablet, they're much more than a, a platform for multimedia. They have accelerometers in them, they have gyroscopes, they have um, Micros uh, I, I want to say microscopes, but actually I mean a microphone. Um, they have cameras, they have um, lots of data. They have lots of data about the environment that they're around, if they know how, you're being, how they're being held. They have the data of the user, they have the entire internet um, available to them. And indeed, in the last few years, um, museums have taken um, this functionality and experimented with it. Things like location awareness, um, overlaying, uh, information over a camera view, uh, even gamifications that capture the flag in the um, Scottish Museum or Museum of Scotland. Uh, Gift for Athena is a game as well in which um, kids try to uh, have a quest to find certain things in the museum and they play over that. And so I get back to um, the title of the talk, which is Sniper Snails, Sextants and Serpents, as a way to talk about what we've been doing. We've been doing a lot of the same sort of work. Um, I'm going to talk about four apps today, and I am going to do a live demo, which is always the death of any presentation. <laughs> so we're going to start out with the Pit Rivers audio trails. Now what you see up there is what's on this phone in my hand. I'm going to launch it. Um, and it is, by all um, you know, traditional views, a, a, an audio guide, but it has a difference, and that's that it knows where you are. Right, so I'm not actually in the upper gallery of Pit Rivers, but I have the eye beacon that we have installed <laughs> in the Pit Rivers upper gallery. So um, because it is near this beacon, it can know that I'm there. And then I go to the upper gallery, and the sniper's helmet is recommended to me as I walk by the sniper's helmet, and that's either this one or one of the other ones that I'm holding. Mm -hmm. And when I, when, I go, when I click on that exhibit, I can then hear some audio about it. And that audio is coming through my laptop, but trust me, there is audio, <laughs> audio available. The next app I'm going to talk about is Sensing Evolution. And I'm sorry, that, is, that was a project that um, involved Hawes and Helen um, from the museum. This is Sensing Evolution, and it uses the same technology, but in a slightly different way, in a sort of a gamification way. It's an app for school groups. I work with Scott Billings and Janet um, and Rachel on this one. And what this does is it challenges school groups to find um, different displays in the uh, Museum of Natural History. 
And once they get there, and once they've found it, the beacon triggers a video and a uh, quiz afterwards. Pocket Curator is a, an app that grew out of the Hidden Museum project. And the Hidden Museum project was looking at ways that we could deliver content in context. And what we really wanted to do was find ways that engage people with the exhibit and enhance that experience, but didn't take away from it, things that were heads up. And one of the things through our research that we found was that um, audio is actually very heads up. You know, and there's a reason audio guys are popular. And, um, that short audio, especially audio that answers questions, worked very well with visitors. They would look at the display and they would listen to, um, listen to the audio. And we also experimented with ways to use the audio to make them maybe go around the display or look at different aspects of it. But we wanted to push that sort of interactivity a little bit more. And so with each of the objects that we feature in the app, we have some sort of interactive. This is an interactive about a sextant. Now, a sextant allows you to figure out the latitude at sea based on the angle of the sun. Right? And so what you do, you can hear, just you can hear the, 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 the sea there. Um, you hit start. What you do is you hold up your phone to try to find the horizon line. Now, I'm on a boat, right, in the middle of the sea, so it's, it's pretty shaky here. Yeah, I'm not careful, I'm giving myself an eye patch. Now, I'm looking through the scope, I'm lining up the horizon, I set the horizon, and now what I'm asked to do is find the angle of the sun. And with the sextants, you'd be doing this by moving the arm in the mirror. And so I found the sun, and it gives me, it shows, well, first of all, it reinforces what I just did. So people can really make that connection between the sextant and that activity. But it gives me the angle of the sun, which is 36.5. Now this is actually um, calculated in the app for today at noon. So it works all throughout the year, but then give you, that's pretty good. Gives you um, the line across Oxford. There are a number of different interactors in the app, and for the sake of time, I'm just showing you this one. We're pushing this a bit further in another app that we've built, which is um, called Resound. And Resound allows you to um, listen to, read about, and play several of the instruments in the Bait Collection, as well as the Ashmolean Museum. And so this is a serpent, it's a military instrument, um, it's one of the more bizarre looking ones that we have. And so you can read about it and you can listen to a musician play it. But critically, you can also play it yourself. And I'm moving to this phone just so I can get closer to the microphone. And hopefully, <laughs> we'll see how this works. But, so starting from that screen, I'm going to play the serpent. Right, it's giving me an overlay that kind of shows me how to do it. And then everyone, uh, God's being kind. To get this way so you can hear it. It actually is playing. <laughs> now, we're going to go from one of the perhaps worst sounding instruments to one of the best. This is, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong app, the wrong phone. This is the Amadi, and up, yeah, this is the Amadi upstairs in the Ashmolean. And we actually have the owner of the Amadi. Um, record it for us. And so again, I should say that all of these recordings, all the notes that are played, everything in the app is from the actual instrument itself. Right? And one of the really difficult things um, in this project was finding a good way for somebody to have an experience of playing a violin. Right? It's an extremely complicated instrument. Um, so what we've come up with is, I'm going to try to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> And so, again, here we are using the, thank you. <laughs> and that is the actual sound of the instrument. And we're using the sensors on the phone to know about how it's being held, the acceleration. We're using sensors um, in the, uh, the, the microphone, as well as the accelerometer and the serpent. We've got a number of other instruments in there, um, things like a trumpet that was um, used by Oliver Cromwell's trumpeter. So it's also extremely um, we're extremely interested in using historic instruments and, and telling their story as well. So, yep, um, I'm getting the one minute warning. What I need to do is just go back to my slides. So what's next, um, for us what's next is the project that was just briefly mentioned by Beth. We're building a system to um, make it 
easier for diverse voices to tell their stories through these apps. Um, and one of the really um, interesting things today was the diversity in the audiences that you're trying to reach. And we want to also um, show that diversity also in the voices that get to talk to those audiences. And in addition to a, a CMS, a, a repository of these stories, we'll also be using some of these um, diverse techniques for presenting those stories as well in apps. Um, I was going to talk about uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, which is just in its, its infancy right now. Um, the big question here is no one really wants to update something like that on their face. Um, however, I think there are quite a few opportunities for access, to be able to access areas that you normally wouldn't be able to access for people in different countries who can't come to the museum, and for disabled users as well, disabled visitors being able to access areas the museum they can't. And the final is machine learning. We're at the very, very forefront, or very, very, um, bleeding edge of this, where um, this is from the Tate. It's an exhibition in which an artificial intelligence looks at a stream of news photos, um, analyzes them to find what objects, what colors, what composition is there, and pulls out paintings from the collection. Right? And you can imagine you know, where this could go. I mentioned we have a lot of data on our phone. Um, Apple and Google and all the big players are trying to use that information to do things like help you automatically categorize your photos on your phone. Well, I can imagine a, a museum app that would notice some of the photos that you've categorized and make recommendations for you based on some of your interests. Now, that sounds creepy. That sounds really, really creepy. But I'd also say that art museums really didn't like the idea of having cell phones in their gallery. Now that's just normal. And I would be willing to bet in five to 10 years after the big players have gotten lots of people used to this and have gotten over some of the privacy concerns and where it's normal for your phone to, to, for apps on your phone to use some of your other data, that that might be a possibility. But again, you know, we recognize the privacy concerns in, in that. But, so that's probably several years out before we could actually do that responsibly. Um, last thing I'm going to say is, again, you don't have to be technical to have a good idea for technology. And I think some of the barriers that may have, have limited thinking in the past don't really exist anymore. And Lots of the best ideas are going to come from the people who are working in museums every single day. Thank you very much.